Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Pray First, a conversation we have Monday through Friday right here on the Pastor Doug page. Hashtag live if you're joining us live. Hashtag recorded if you're joining recorded. Hashtag shared. And get this out on your pages. If you would, share the Pastor Doug page uh, and get that out to your family and your friends so that every day when we go live, they will receive a notification. Good morning, Leanne. Good morning. Good morning, Anita. Good morning, everybody. Hit the hearts, hit the lights, go crazy on those, and let all of our first-time guests know that you are glad that they are here. Good morning, Tracy and Jackson. Anita Henson, good morning. Good morning, guys. Make sure that you share this out and get this out on your pages. We're going to continue the conversation about the four living creatures found in Revelation as we head towards that book. I want us to be able to understand it when we read it. Good morning, TikTok family out there on the TikTok platform. It's so good to be with you guys on TikTok Live. Good morning, Kelly Ash. Good morning, Melissa Chisholm. Good morning, Barbie Shook. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I'm trying to say good morning to all the names that I am seeing. If I am not saying good morning to you, it's because I don't see your name yet. Good morning, Daryl Mammon. Good morning, Manon. Good morning, uh, Barbie. I think I've already said good morning, Barbie. Good morning, Julia. Uh, we're going to uh, start in uh, Revelation chapter 4, but we're going to move over to Ezekiel chapter 3 just to get you prepared for that. But I'm going to kind of reread what we've been reading, and then we're going to talk about the four living creatures found in Revelation and how they apply to your church, and today more specifically, how they apply to your life. Good morning, Bonnie. Good morning, Donna Baker. Good morning. Good morning. Um, make sure that you're hashtagging uh, all of your stuff today. Uh, it really does matter. It helps the analytics, and it helps people to... Uh, see the page, see the content, even uh, though you're sharing it. Good morning, Whitley. Good morning, Michelle Edge. Let's jump straight into Revelation chapter 4. We're going to start at verse 6. We're going to be talking again today about the four creatures because in the Bible project, you are in Hebrews, I mean, on a lightning pace to get towards the book of Revelation. And when you get there and when it's being read to you, I want you to have an understanding as to, to what, what you're hearing. So here we go, Revelation 4, verse 6 through 11, we've talked about the four creatures that all have four faces, and they all have a wheel beside them. Just as a little uh, maybe pop quiz, there's a wheel beside all of them, but what's in the wheel? What's in the wheel beside the four living creatures? The four living creatures represent the four foundations of the church. We talked about these yesterday. I'm just going to hit those real quickly. There was an eagle face, a lion, face, an ox, face, and the face of a man. The eagle represents the area of the foundation of worship. The lion represents the foundation of prayer. The ox represents the foundation of serving. And the man represents the foundation that is Jesus, who brings, who gives, Grace. Everybody hashtag grace. Before the throne, verse 6, Revelation chapter 4, there was a sea of glass like crystal. And in the midst of the throne and around the throne were four living creatures full of eyes, front and in the back. The first living creature was like a lion. Remember we read in Ezekiel these exact same four creatures that Ezekiel saw when he saw the whirlwind coming. And when a whirlwind comes, or less, we're more uh, familiar in the Mid-South area with tornadoes, you may not be in your part of the country or the world, but we are. Tornadoes don't push things down. It's a funnel that pulls things up. So God's not trying to press you down. He's trying to lift you up. Listen to what, in the midst of the throne and around the throne, were four living creatures full of eyes front and back. The first living creature like a lion, the second like a calf, the third had the face of a man, and the fourth like a flying eagle. The four living creatures having six wings were full of eyes around and within, and they do not rest day or night because they are worshiping. They are saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was, who is, and who is to come. And whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, Jesus, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders, 12 representatives from the Old Testament, the 12 tribes of Judah, 12 sons of Judah, the 12 tribes of Israel, 
and the 12 apostles representing the New Testament, 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. And they cast their crowns before the throne saying, you are worthy, O Lord. Everybody hashtag worthy. You are worthy, O Lord. You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things. And by your will, all things exist and are created. So on yesterday, we spoke very specifically about the four foundations of the church. Today, we're going to talk about how those same four foundations are the same four foundations of your life. Now, let me pray this prayer real quickly, and maybe you'll understand why as we proceed in this teaching. Lord Jesus, through the power of your Holy Spirit and through our technologies, into the rooms where we are, no spirit, but your Holy Spirit, have your way. Lord, give us ears to hear what you're saying to your church, your people, your children, your bride. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen. So number one, we talked about yesterday. If you missed yesterday, go back on the page and read the content or listen to the content, I should say, watch the content of the four foundations of the church. Number two, the four foundations of life. Stephanie, Judas was replaced with another disciple um, after, he, uh, after he took his life. There was still a 12th. There was a replacement. Other people say that Paul is the replacement, but I believe it's the 12th that was, uh, that was replaced. Great question, though. Number two, the foundations of life. Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 13. Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 13. Not only are these four creatures the foundation of the church, they're the foundation of your individual life. I would also like to say something else about Judas, but I think most of y'all know what I think. So I don't want to bring that up right now. But I'm... But Stephanie, there's something to what you said, but I can't go there right now. Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 13. I also heard the noise of the wings of the living creatures touched one another. And the noise of the wheel spinning beside them. Okay, so a few moments ago I asked you what was in the wheel that is beside each of the four living creatures. It's God's spirit. There's multiple wheels directions that God leads the church. And some of you are more personality driven or gifted driven or more focused in one of those four areas. Prayer, maybe you're a strong prayer. Worship, strong worshiper. Maybe you're a servant, strong server. Uh, maybe you are um, all about that grace, about that grace, about that grace. Uh, and, and you're just real strong in that area. So as you look at the church, you notice that the church focuses on different areas at different times. As Revelation describes it, as the wheel moves the church, as the spirit moves the church. So sometimes you'll get into a church and, I mean, it will all it'd be all about prayer, man. I mean, you just walk in on that church on any given Sunday and they're talking about prayer. They're focused on prayer. So when maybe a visitor comes, a new person comes, and they are strong in the area of prayer, they immediately think, this is my church. This is a church that prays. They've got a prayer line up there. They, they're pinning prayer onto the cross. They're, they have prayer teams. They have prayer night. They have prayer meeting. And, and then and you're there for about a year or so. And then the wheel moves in another direction, and they start focusing on serving. And you're like, this isn't the church that, that I, I joined. This, the church has changed. The church is different. The church is always changing. Our focus, guys, it wouldn't it be wonderful if we could focus on everything at once, but we can't. And it's not God's design nor his plan. So he moves us and he changes us and he might take us into an area of worship. But here's why. You never leave the subject of prayer entirely. You began to be swept up in the whirlwind. You began to be caught up in the movement of the Holy Spirit. So every time that comes back around, you're not 
in a circle on a flat, you've been going up a mountain. So the next time prayer comes, you're at a higher level of prayer. The next time worship comes, you're at a higher level of worship. The next time servant evangelism comes around, you're at a higher level of servant evangelism. The next time uh, someone brings up grace, you're at a higher level of grace because the Holy Spirit is drawing you up. He's pulling you closer. So your understanding of prayer today should not be the same as your understanding of prayer was 10 years ago, 5 years ago, 2 years ago. He's constantly bringing you up. So the Spirit, listen to verse 14. So the Spirit lifted me up. So he's not just there. The Spirit in the wheel is not just there for the church. These four living creatures don't just represent the foundation of the church. These four living creatures and the Spirit in the wheel represents the foundation of your life. Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 14. So the capital S, the Holy Spirit, lifted me up, took me away. The Holy Spirit lifted me up, took me away. I went in bitterness, in the heat of my spirit, but the hand of the Lord was strong upon me. Whew! <laughs> so the Spirit, what's he do? He lifts me up. We do need all four of these areas. But God's always working on one area in particular. And you will notice it, you'll see it, you'll be aware of it, and you, you look at it and you call it seasons. God's got me in a season of prayer right now. God's got me in a season of, of worship right now. God has just impressed on me to, you know, whatever that is. And let me tell you why you need that. Because if you're not strong, listen to me, if you're not strong in one of these areas, you say, I am a strong worshiper, but I am so judgmental. I just can't seem to extend the grace to others that has been extended to me. I mean, I just get so angry and just filled with anger at people when I see how stupid they are. I just, I just want to punish them. I want them to get what's coming to them. I want them, man... Justice will prevail, but I am just worshiping. I'm just worshiping. Listen to me. Or you're just full of that grace. Man, everybody can do anything. It just don't even bother you. Just, oh my goodness, just peace, love, mwah, groovy love, amen, hallelujah. But you don't serve. You don't help. There are obvious needs that you could feel, and you're just like, uh. Or maybe you are a prayer. And you just pray, I mean, you just press in and you just intercede and you've just undecided you're an interceder and you don't have to serve or you don't, you know, you don't have to worry about that grace because you, your, your area is a prayer. Here's the beautiful thing about the four foundations of God lifting you up. You can ask God to strengthen you in one of these four areas. You can ask God, God, I need you to strengthen me in worship. I'm going to tell you why it's necessary in a minute. God, I feel like I'm pretty strong in prayer, but I want you to strengthen me. God, I need you to strengthen me in serving. Maybe you're a servant and, and you're just super weak in prayer. God, I don't even know what I'm doing right now. I'm, I'm praying to you about my prayer life. You can ask God, God, strengthen me in my prayer because, listen to me, this is so important. It's the point of today's teaching. The four foundations are also four warning signals that come before a fall. Please, please listen. The four foundations are also the four warning signals. It's like a dashboard on your car. Maybe you got your fuel light. Maybe your RPMs are revving way too high. Maybe your check engine light is on. Uh, maybe your speedometer is where it shouldn't be. You know what I'm talking about? These four foundations are like a dashboard to discover how close you are to going over an edge. Therefore, warning signals in areas of your life that you don't only need to go higher, you must go higher or you'll go over. N number one, if you're prideful, if, if, that, if that is piercing you right now, if, if, if there's no humility, if, if you're, you can't, you just superior, you know, you're just, 
you know, pride doesn't just mean that you feel superior. It means that you can't be corrected. I've seen people who felt far less than superior. I mean, they would be on the other side of what I call the pride spectrum, and they felt uh, very less than everybody in the world. But if you said anything that was corrective or I'm concerned about this area of your life, that pride would rear up and go nuts. Like, what do you mean? What do you, nah, what do you, blah, 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 blah. guys, 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 guys. If we don't practice humility, pride doesn't come before a fall. People quote that verse all the time, uh, off the new social media version edition, but that's not what the Bible says. The Bible doesn't say pride comes before a fall. The Word of God says that pride goeth before destruction. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Pride goes before destruction. So here we are, we're seeing one of those four dashboard lights in our lives that if we're dealing with pride, if, if our weak area uh, is in the area of ox, you know, we do, 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 and we do everything right, you know, you ain't, you ain't, you ain't, um, destruction's coming, and, and you're weak in that area. Uh, another dashboard light is uh, if we're, if we're, we lack grace, if we lack grace, um, if you are legalistic, legalistic, uh, Legalism does not um, lessen sin. Legalism is the fertilize of sin. Legalism fertilizes, incubates, and promotes sin. So if you're, you're weak in the area of grace, legalism will take you towards a fall. I can't tell you how many people I've known that were so legalistic about marriage and legalistic about finances and legalistic about the way that you worship and legalistic about food and legalistic about actions and, and things of that nature who invited destruction in their lives and, and they're no longer that person anymore. Sin was fertilized. Sin was incubated. Uh, sin was magnified. Um, these four areas of your life, you can ask God, God, I need you to help me. I'm a pretty legalistic person. Um, God, I, I, I need to show more grace. I need to understand grace. I need to understand God's love for me. I need to understand what he's doing in my life and what he's doing in other people's lives and what the point is, the point being love and kindness and forgiveness and gentleness and peace and kindness and self-control. I need to understand what the fruit of the Spirit is and how it is so different from legalism. If the area of your life that you're weak in is prayer, uh, maybe you feel self-sufficient. You don't need to pray. You don't need to ask for help. Uh, maybe not only do you feel self-sufficient, you feel self-existing. He's not even in the room. The Holy Spirit's not even there. I'm not talking to him because there's no one there. Do you realize when we don't pray, and I don't mean, Lord Jesus, I got my head bowed, my eyes closed, and, and I'm praying, and at the end of my prayer, I'm going to say amen. I mean, when you don't talk to God, it's not just that you feel self-sufficient. Many times you feel like you're self-existent, and he's not there to you. And if the Holy Spirit doesn't become a person to you, you won't have a personal relationship with him. And if you don't have a personal relationship with him, you won't talk to him. It's a warning signal on the dashboard that you're heading towards fall. Pride, uh, legalism, lack of humility, self-sufficiency, self-existence, heading for a fall. Worship. If you're weak in the area of worship, you might be a worshiper of mammon. It leads to a fall. You cannot worship God and mammon. Maybe, maybe it's not just mammon. Maybe it's worship of yourself. Mammon, mammon drives you to worship yourself and worship other things. You're heading for a fall. 
And here's the deal about all of these dashboard lights. I can see them better in the lives of others than I can see them in myself. So I can, I can see that in others and I'm just like, oh, that's, that's, they're dealing with pride. Oh, they're dealing with, you know, uh, self-sufficiency. They're, they're a mammon worshiper or, woo, they are legalistic. It's always easier to see it in them and miss it in myself. And, and I've got to check the gauges. I've got to check the dashboard. I've got to do some self-introspection and say, you know, I'm, I'm here to love them. I'm here to uh, discover my blind spots. Everybody hashtag blind spots. So let me, let me just give you this, and then I'm, then I'm going to pray for you. I promise you this. If your foundation is not laid with these four, if your foundation is not laid with uh, worship, prayer, serving, and grace, humility and grace, uh, when the opportunity for, I'm going to give you some, when the opportunity for adultery comes, you're more likely to uh, engage adultery. When the opportunity for, and, and I don't just mean intercourse outside of marriage with another individual, I mean lust, I mean looking upon, I mean uh Pornography. I mean, it, it's going, it's going to vent in in one of these areas when the opportunity comes for you to um, really blast somebody. You know, let them have it in your legalistic self. When that opportunity comes, you're going to let them have it. You're going to give it to them. You're going to, you can drive your children away from God with legalism. You can drive your spouse away from you with legalism. God. The, the enemy is always using these things to wedge between you and a relationship. You'll drive God away. Uh, when the opportunity comes for you not to worship or the opportunity comes for you to be self-sufficient, when the opportunity comes for uh, you to you know, still worship from God, you'll do it. And, and, and you'll end up uh, in a place of destruction. Ask God. God... <laughs> I need you to, I need you to help me. I want to come up there. I want to grow in this area. God, I want to grow in the area of prayer. I want to grow in the area of worship. I want to grow in the area of grace. I want to grow in the area of humility. He'll help you grow. Revelation chapter 6 says that the four spirits are saying, come here. Come here, you're being invited. Revelation chapter 6, then I'll pray for you. Now I saw the Lamb open, verse 1, one of the seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures saying with a voice of thunder, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a white horse. And he who sat on it had a bow, and a crown was given to him. And he went out conquering and to conquer. When, when he opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature saying, Come, come and see. Another horse, fiery red, went out, and it was granted to the one who sat upon it to take peace from the earth and that people should kill one another. And there was given to him a sword. Verse 5. When he opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature saying, Come, come and see. So I looked, and behold, a black horse, and he who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, A quart of wheat for a denarius and three quarts of barley for a denarius do not harm oil and the wine verse 7 when he opened the fourth seal I heard a voice of the fourth living creature saying come and see come and see so I looked and behold a pale horse and the name of him who sat on it was death and Hades followed with him and the power was given to the fourth to kill over a fourth of the earth to kill with sword with hunger with death and by the beast of the earth Verse 9, when he opened the fifth seal, I saw on the altar, under the altar the souls of those who had been slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they had held. And they cried out with a loud voice, O Lord, holy and true, how long until you judge and avenge the blood of those who dwell on the earth? And the white robe was given to each of them, and they said that they should rest a little longer until the number of their fellow servants and brethren who would be killed as they were was completed. Mm. I'm telling you, you're going to want desperately to have your four areas shored up. 
when these four horses leave. Come and see. You need to scoot in closer to God. Anytime you see the world around you deteriorating, anytime you see death and destruction, anytime you see people falling, you need to realize. Scoot up close. How do you scoot up close to God? How do you scoot up close to the church? How do you scoot up close to the Holy Spirit? Strengthen these four areas. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I pray that you strengthen these areas in our own personal lives. Father, that the fruit of the Spirit would be evident in our lives. And that you would apocalypse us, the blind spots in our lives, the weak spots in our lives. And that you would draw us closer and that we would have ears to hear your Spirit right now in the name of Jesus. Right now in this, this time we live in, that we would have the ears to hear your Spirit thundering from your throne in heaven. Come up here. Where's here? Come up in this place. Come up in this spot. Come up in this time. Come up. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. I'll see you guys tomorrow. I love you all. Man, I hope this stuff is uh, not just deep, but I hope you're finding it applicable uh, to things and areas of your life, uh, decisions, actions that you can make. Uh, but in all that, just talk to God and pray, God, strengthen me in this area. Bye, guys.